Let's kick it. <laughs> Hello and welcome to part 2 of what's new in Windows Whistler 2276. If you haven't seen part 1 yet, I admire your way of doing things. Now, on with part 2. Now there's one thing that I've obviously been skirting around and that's the elephant in the room and that is Windows Media Player, which is new for this build. Well it's not new per se, this version is new, this is version 7.0.0.1956, which I'm sure is useful information to somebody. But yeah, this is version 7, obviously before we've had version 6.4 and just to open that by way of comparison yeah, it's in Windows Media Player and it's in Player 2, I don't know why it's in Player 2 I mean, it's version 6 so I'm not sure why it's in Player 2 but yeah, that's version 6.4 and it's got the same stuff, it's just not as well presented I mean, it's just these little things on the top here which open web pages and, oh, that's just the worst that one. Well, it looked like it was working, then it sort of stopped working. So I'll leave that there. But yeah, it's got the it's pretty much got the same stuff. It's just compact and yeah, so it's not very well presented. But now in this shiny new version, whoa, look at the differences. We've got things, we've got other things, we've got man, we've got things galore here. If we open this, I'll put it on mute again so we don't get the content claims from YouTube. But yeah, now we've got visualizations, we've got uh, portable device things. If you have a portable device and you plug into your computer, you can now take things off it and put it onto, from your computer onto your device, or from your device onto your computer, or something like that. Yeah, you can also change the skins, which you pretty much can't because, oh, that works then. Oh. You can change, you can't obviously on here because there's, this is only the beta version and it's only got this skin. But if you could, you could have that song, I mean, song skin. Yeah, it's also got the media guide, which is meant to open in the middle here, whereas on the old one it opens in this. Now this one actually works. I'm not really sure how this still works. The not point six the 6.4 version when this newer version doesn't work and that's because that is trying to open a page called windowsmedia.com slash reader slash media guide to ask question mark WMP friendly equals true now as you can see things uh, archives only got three copies of this and uh, none of them are from this particular time frame so there's one from July which is before this build and then there's one from September 2001 which doesn't actually work because the server that it's on is down apparently so but yeah if you look at the July 6th version then you get a redirection to this other URL and eventually why does everything go wrong when I record it? Eh? it wasn't like this before it actually worked it was Yeah, go on. Yeah, it's not working on that one. Why is it not working? Anyway, here's one I prepared earlier. This is it. Firefox. Let's see if it works on here, because this is the one it's been working on. And eventually, when it redirects, yeah. That's strange. Why is it working on Firefox but not Internet Explorer? Oh, anyway, yeah, the preview version of WindowsMedia.com has expired because we're live. So this is from the beta period. Uh, well, the, probably the alpha period because it says you can get to the new site by downloading the Windows Media Player 7 beta, so it's probably some sort of alpha site for Windows Media Media Guide. So yeah, that's what it would, well, not this page obviously, but it would pop up some sort of media guide, but it doesn't work. Likewise, the radio tuner also doesn't work, it's meant to open a web page, but that doesn't work. And this one goes to it's like a different URL and this one actually does work in Internet Explorer so I've just tried it and this is windowsmedia.com slash reader slash read slash radio tuner dot asp and 
these are on the same dates as the other one, except these ones actually go somewhere. Although they have to redirect not just once, but twice to this windowsmedia.com slash radio slash radio dot asp and eventually we get something and we're here. And this is windowsmedia.com, the radio guide obviously. It's got the MSM branding which all these sites seem to have at this time. And there's some radio stations which if you're American you're probably familiar with some of them. Maybe. I mean I love this one here called CAC, because CAC is British English meaning quite shit. So yeah, it's a shit radio station and it's got the cross next to it which means pe other people must have thought it was a bit rubbish so it's been crossed out so you can't listen to it. But yeah, that was the... Well, that was a bit funny. So yeah, you can select all these type of radio stations and... Well, I'd say this would probably pop up in there. With slightly, it'd be slightly different obviously, it'd probably just be this middle bit here. And then you'd be able to click on one and it would start Windows Media Player playing the radio station. So yeah, that's Windows Media Player doing that. Obviously there's different visualizations. And I've forgotten how to do this. It's been ages since I've used this type of version. Yeah, there you go. You can have loads of different ones. I'm not going to show them all because that'd be daft. But yeah, you get statistics, play a full screen. You can do quite a lot of stuff. It's actually got quite a, a bit of format support after the last one. It will actually play Windows Media 9 formatted files. So that must be backwards compatible because we have one here as you see it's playing it so that does work and this WMV file that doesn't work oh it does work there you go that's a start of some YouTube video and yes yeah, MSMPEG for vers version 2 I think that's new for this build of Windows Media Player so you can use MSMPEG for version 2. That's not straight MPEG 4, so don't try and use like H.264 or anything like that, because it's not going to work without the codex. But yeah, I think that's all the one. Get off. I think that's all. Ooh, don't want to click on that. Go off. Yeah, don't, was this, did this work? I think this was Windows Media version 9 or something. That obviously didn't work. No, that doesn't work. So that's Windows Media Video 9, I think. Or was that? Anyway, that, whatever format that was, that doesn't work. <laughs> Helpful information, I know, but <laughs> whatever format that was doesn't work. So it's still quite limited, but it's actually more expansive than it was. Another fun thing that's in the Windows Media Code it's in the OCX code, the ActiveX control, but it's in the main one as well, but it's just easier to show you like this. And that is when I find it. Show message. And this is in the code. It says, developer warning, detected use of a Windows message that probably needs special case thunking code that hasn't been implemented yet. Now you'll never see this because A, it requires you to run on Win95, and B, it's not actually used in the code. The values needed to trigger it don't actually work. I mean, it doesn't actually use those values to trigger it, so you'll never see it. But yeah, you, it's, this is part of Windows Media for, I don't know, for some reason, if they sent the wrong message to a window, they're like, whoa, I don't know how to send this message. So it would pop this up, and they'd go, oh yes, I need to fix that. And they'd fix it, probably. Now, as you might imagine, Windows Media Player 7, there's been a new version. There is another new feature that I can't really show you. But I can just barely prove that it's there, and that is now it is fitted out with DRM capabilities. So if we open up this DLL called Black Box and look at all the strings within it, you see if we see here, there's this. It was built on August the 8th, so it's actually quite a while before um, this build of Windows. But yeah, you can see it's got the DRM. These are all parts of DRM now, and pretty much quite a lot of these are actually to do with DRM. I mean, well, not that's a bit of a lie, they're not really. Most of them are to do with Windows Media Player. As you can see, all these WM DLLs here, they're all to do with Windows Media Player. And they're all new for this build, so. As well as some other ones like MSWMDM, that's the device manager you know, in the UI. And also there's 
well, black box as we've seen, that's the DRM one, and another thing to do with the Windows CE, Windows Media Device Manager. So as you can see, there's quite a lot of new what, DLLs to do with Windows Media Player to make it have all of its functionality. But if we look in WMP Core, there was something that I found slightly weird to be including. Uh, if we go through all these strings, there's actually a list of musical genres, which I suppose you could select, but I tried in the UI and you can't actually select them. And I've got to try and find it now, because I haven't noted down the number of where it is. And here it is, number 2457. There's actually entries within the genres for Pawn Groove and Booty Bass. Now, I don't know where they got this list of genres from, but I'm guessing they probably didn't, pretty much didn't want to include Pawn and Booty within their selections, which I suppose this is in the UI somewhere, but I can't find where it actually... Oh, hang on a minute. That might be where it is. It might be within file properties. Uh, no, there's another genre yet, so it's not on there. Oh, well, maybe next time. I actually had a look to see if I could see where these strings actually came from, these genres, and I had a look, and they're actually from the MP3 ID3 tags. So, they're the genres for MP3. I presume they're meant to show up in the UI so that you can either change it or just if they're just for display or whatever, but as you can see, Windows Media Player doesn't play MP3 files. And if you go to the media library when your mouse is not acting up, then you can see that it doesn't show up the genre. Well, it does, but you can't change it. So, unless you've actually got a MP3 file that's got Pawn Groove or Booty Bass in it, then it won't show up in the UI. But, yeah, there you go. It also can't play. Um, mp3 streams within WAV files because that doesn't work either so I don't know why there's the the mp3 codec is meant to be in here well the decoder anyway but it doesn't seem to work so hmm I don't know another slightly weird occurrence I noticed in the Windows Media encoder and decoder DLLs is that if you look down there's all these sort of half alphabetical strings. Now I don't know if they had somebody young on the team who was just learning out the alphabet or somebody took his kid in and had him typing on the keyboard trying to type out the alphabet but yeah that one ends up Y you see there's some down here that there must be another one where it ends at M there you go these end at M and yeah and that one's F so yeah I don't know what all these strings are about obviously I can guess the, the numbers end up to F are for hex strings but all these other ones, and why there's so many copies of them, and why that one ends at G, I don't know. So yeah, and all these triple numbers here. I don't know, it's just weird why there's so many of them in the same deal. They all exist in the decoder as well. So, yeah, see they're all there in the decoder as well. So yeah, I don't know what all that's about. But, hmm, strange. Also new in this build, well fixed really, is instead of opening 16 million windows now, the find target button only opens one and it keeps showing the one it opened, so it doesn't show 6 million anymore and you can show it now, as soon as you click that you can actually click OK and cancel and it will disappear instead of hanging around and being unresponsive and all that. So that's fixed in this build. I noticed there's one cosmetic bug in this build that wasn't in the last build and that's in the file save, file open, file save dialogs so it's not exclusive to notepad and if they're in list view mode then the text of the longer ones and in this case longer seems to be about seven characters then it gets chopped off for some unknown reason and filled with ellipses instead now see this happens to this depends one here and file disk also gets chopped off and I don't quite know why that is Usually you see it more in details mode, and if the column is too short for it, then you usually see it like that. But not in list mode, so I'm not quite... Oh, it's fixed it. Hmm, yeah, I'm not quite sure why 
that's happened. Yeah, you see it goes back to happening there, so I'm not sure about that. I didn't know it did that until just then. But yeah, as you can see, oh, it happens in the last in the last build. If you go to save as, then stick it in list mode, then it's all fine and dandy. So it wasn't brought over from that build. So yeah, slight cosmetic bug introduced in this build. There's another slight cosmetic change to one of the components, but I'm not quite sure why they've changed it. Now, if you remember in some of the earlier builds, well specifically in 2211 I think it was, where I showed you Shijina and it deleted that registry key for the original user's control panel every time it was loaded. Well, that original user's control panel has been updated. Now since there's no pretty much easy way to get to this, I'm not quite sure why it's been updated, but if I restore it by the magic of a registry script, when I find it, it's probably over here, there it is, and then refresh, as you can see, the first change is that it's helpfully been renamed to user accounts, which is exactly the same as what the real or new user accounts thing is called, so that's not confusing at all. But yeah, what has changed, this is all the same, it's on the advanced button. As you can see, this text has changed here and now it gets chopped off after the second sentence. That provides electronic what? I need to know what it provides. So yeah, that's changed. Also, these two options I think are different. That brings up this keyring. Obviously, that's also accessible from here because it's the credential manager. So that's the same thing. And also this new certificate thing, which I don't think works. Yep, there you go. It doesn't work. But that's in the old version. But this manage passwords thing isn't. And if is this text because it had text that fit on, and I can show you that. As you can see here, it's called users and passwords rather than users account, user accounts. Yep, as you can see, it's just, just certificate management in this one. And use certificates to, yeah, well, you can read that yourself. And that doesn't work in this one either. But the other one is certificates, which does work. And it brings up all the certificates that are installed for personal use and all that. So, yeah, I'm not quite sure why they changed it from certificate management to passwords and certificates but they certainly did and chopped off the text in the meantime the only other major overhaul in 2276 isn't actually that major and that is in the new user accounts thing so I can use that and it's pretty much these things the help for it has been pretty much updated and had pictures added to it like this which wasn't in the last build as we can see. See in there, just brought it up into the main pane of the window, but now it pops out into its own window, and it's all a bit better because it has pictures, and pictures make everything better. Likewise, pretty much everything that says learn about has changed, like see here, there's pictures of the old logon method and new logon method. And it tells you that the old logon method is the most secure way to log on. And there is also. You can learn about deleting an owner account. And there was another one, was it? Not that one. I think it was on. No, it's not that one. Yep, that also had a picture in it. There was one which. Oh, yeah, it's changing your account types. So there you go, there's now an interactive sort of checklist of what the different accounts can do. If you click on them, it deletes the checks of the abilities the account can do. So, the limited account obviously is the most limited, and the administrator is the best, but you already know that anyway. So, yeah, that help has been updated. And I think that's about it. And I think that's going to just about do it for this build. If you're still watching, thanks very much. 
and I will see you in 22.8-7. The build, not the... Uh,